I'd like to thank everyone who's joining us today. Welcome to today's CNCF webinar, Continuous Profiling Go Applications Running on Kubernetes. I'm Christian Jens, Cloud Consultant at Level 25 and CNCF Ambassador. I'll be moderating today's webinar, and we would like to welcome our presenter today, John Luca Abizaros, SRE at InfluxDB. A few Hi. house items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a QA box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to drop your questions in there and we will get to as many as we can, either during or at the end. So bear in mind, we can't do it all at once. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. Basically, please be respectful to all your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinar page at cncf.io forward slash webinars. And with that, I'll hand it over to John Luca to kick off today's presentation. Hello everyone. And thank you, Christian, for your kind introduction. And uh, yeah, thank you for being here. I will share my journey with continuous profiling in Go. So everything that we share is uh, open source. Uh, and uh, I mean, we will see how I set up the continuous profiling infrastructure um, at Influx Data and why. So if you are a Go developer, you probably saw this output already. Uh, if you are not, you can think about that like a profile. So almost every, um, programming languages has one. And in Go, you can hook it to the HTTP, to an HTTP endpoint. So it would be easy to scrape or easy to interact with from the outside. And speaking with, like having the ability to take a snapshot from a running application is very important. And even more when you have containers or when you have pods, because they tend to go and come very quickly. So you have to take a, a picture of the runtime to figure out what's going on or to um, troubleshoot what broke or what didn't work as supposed um, yesterday or last month or also to do is in comparison. So a profile usually exposed like the number of allocation that are that your runtime is doing, the number of goroutines, the heap, the mutex, and you can also do tracing in the runtime as well. So pprof is the format that um, Go use, and it's very, very powerful. And you can also, you can even instrument your code to build profiles and to, and you can extend what a profile can, can um, expose. So for example, in InfluxDB, that is, the time series database open source that we develop at Influx Data. We also um, place inside the um, the profile the last like ten queries that you run, or the last uh, you know a buffer of the logs that the InfluxDB um, daemon uh, shipped, because this helps us a lot when doing troubleshooting. So when there are performance degradation or issues, we just ask the, the community to send and to share their profiles. And in there, we have everything that we need um, to look at, to reproduce, or to figure out what's going on in the right in the runtime. So Go has a runtime, there's a binary that runs, and this is a very good way to introspect uh, the runtime itself. And it's, it's easy because it is a tool that is shipped with Go itself. So you don't have to install anything. It just works when you install the language. So as I told you, it's a, it can be an HTTP endpoint. So in this example, I am using a Go tool um, binary. It's called pprof. And uh, I assign a URL to it. And this URL is my um, Go application that is running. And as you can see, you uh, you can you see the profiles because that command fetches the profile, it stores it locally, as you can see, and uh, you can read it in various formats. This is the textual format, so it's a string, but uh, you can also print like a graph like this one. So 
profiles are very good because you can introspect the chain of functions that your runtime runs. So you can see how many, like how many CPUs they are using and you have a very, very deep visibility, like function based on uh, who is blocking the mutex or who has the coroutines um, and so on. So it's very, very powerful. And not only to figure out what's going on now, but also to figure out what, and also to do like post-mortem promotion. So as I told you, it can, it can be a, a HTTP endpoint. It doesn't need to be one, uh, but it's very common to have it exposed over the port like 6060. And from the Go documentation, this is how you do it. So you import the net, the net HTTP PPROF um, package and you, you start uh, a server. By default, it uses um, the global mutex. Uh, so it is um, in, the, in the main HTTP server when you start it. So you don't have to do any routing or things like that. You can do that, but it's, you can also use the default one. So now that we are all on the same page, uh, let's say something about myself. I'm uh, John Luca. I'm a CNCF ambassador as well, and I work as a software engineer, source reliability, let's say, at Netflix Data. So I'm an S3 officially. And um, you can find me uh, on the internet like Janar. And uh, uh, I have a website where I try to blog like with a good cadence and uh, with a good schedule. And you can find me on Twitter when I am when you can, it's the best way to follow my rambles if you like them. And now that we are all at home, it's good to have some you know, chat. So see you there. Um, when I'm not, I mean, I, might, I, I like to make dirty hacks. So I, I like to do scripts. I like to do whatever that makes like automation uh, easy for everybody. And when I'm not hacking, I grow my vegetables. So in Italy, I'm based in Italy, and it's actually like very cold now, since like a week. So, but I'm very, I can't wait to get back to my garden. And I like to travel for fun and work, but as I said, now we are all quite here. So it's good to uh, uh, talk with you. So I'm used to uh, have a look at the chat and the Q&A as well. So if you have any question that shows your mind, just, just share there. And if it's the case, I will try to answer. Uh, as soon as possible or later if, uh, if it's better. So yeah, I mean, um, profiles and um, uh, the way we look at applications changed because now we uh, have clouds mainly <laughs> because the, 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 our environment is way, it's way more dynamic, like VMs come and go, containers come and go even uh, more dynamically. So it's very hard to call stuff with their name because their host name changes, the container name changes, the pod name change. Uh, it's very hard and you have to in some way uh, freeze the, um, you know, take a screenshot of the, of your application time to time and you can, in order for you to, to have a look at what, what, what's going on. So that's why we used to, uh, you know, centralize logs or pool metrics with Prometheus and things like that. Because we don't have the time actually to go SSH and see what's going on. Everything moves too quickly. So you have to take snapshots and look at them uh, all the time. Thank you, Klaus. And uh, yeah, usually application makes trouble in production. That's also important to remember. So everything locally may or, uh, run smoothly, but as soon as it gets to production, that's where the, the trouble starts and that's where like troubles uh, matters even more. So how a developer takes a profile from a local uh, from a local application, it, it's kind of easy. We saw it already. So you have go tools and you can do go tool be prof and you download the tar or you fetch the entry point and from there you're done. You have the, the file locally uh, in your laptop and you can use it, you can compare it as well and so on. But how uh, developers do that in production is uh, a mystery and usually changed company by company. And that's a problem because usually what happens is that a developer asks for somebody that knows where the IPs are or how to get like the kubectl working to connect to the pod and get the profiles. And that's not usually what um, 
the the person that does that is ha is happy to do. So uh, we we are not babysitters for software engineer, but uh, I have to say something that, that is very important. If your developers ask you as an SRE or as a Hobbs person to do something that they are supposed to do, um, the it's, it's our fault because it's it's on us to create a same workshop that um, workflow that uh, developers can use to achieve their goal in a very effective way. So if you get pinged by um, engineers because they don't know how to get profiles or how to get logs or how to get a trace, that's a big like ring. Um, uh, it's a big alert that you should uh, change what you are doing and improve the workflow to bring the developer closer to where they can find uh, useful information. So yeah, and another very crucial um, aspect of, the of a profile is that you never know when you're going to need one. And you never know uh, like how, how uh, to you will use the information that uh, are there. So it's, it's, they, they really behave a lot like metrics. You will may have a ton of them that you never use, but as soon as you remove them or delete them, you will look for them. So it's a lot of information that we have to figure out a way to, uh, to use as best as we can, because it's pricey to, to, to store all those profiles or those metrics or those logs. So let's summarize the issue. So developers are the stakeholders for profiles because they are usually the person that use them because they have to figure out, because it, it's their language, because it's their application, they know the function names and whatever. Um, production is not as comfortable as it should be usually. And there are good reasons for that. Like there is security, there is compliance. So it's all that those are all good reasons to be secure, but also you should be friendly with the developers. Otherwise you will get a lot of noise uh, to yourself and that's not fun. And you, as I say, profiles, you never know when you're gonna need them. It just has metrics and logs. So you, you will may pass like two weeks not looking at them, but at some point you wish, you, somebody will tell you that your application is running high on CPU and you will have to look at them at some point, even back in time. So they are very good for post-mortem. Cloud and Kubernetes um, increase a lot the amount of noise we have and the complexity that uh, the, dynam the, the dynamicity of our environment. So it means that taking the, the snapshot of our application is crucial, but also very hard. And yeah, we have way more bi binaries because we do microservices. We are way more pods. So even if we have a micro one, one service that is like a monolith, it's still way more redundant than uh, that what it used and replicated than what it used to be a few, a few years ago. So all this movement um, like increased complexity. Yeah, as I said, we have exactly the same problem with logs and metrics, and that's why we collect them with, with in time series database. We store we store them, uh, in, and we try to get value out of them when we need to troubleshoot an issue. And to be fair, uh, profiles are just a different way to aggregate point in time. But the, the point comes from the runtime and usually they are grouped by function name. But profiles are just a bunch of time series data aggregated in a way that uh, will look like a profile. So how are we going to solve these issues, all those issues and how are we going to make our life easier, making the developer happy? So that is usually uh, happier. That is usually like how my life goes. Um, so spoiler alert, the, the solution is part of the title of the talk. Uh, yeah, I mean, just for a log that we uh, collect them every like 10 seconds, every seconds, and we push them to a centralized place with RCinch or uh, Flannel or whatever. We can do the same uh, for profiles. That's it. So follow me. For, you have all your applications that are running. Uh, they do amazing stuff. They sell uh, a lot. Like they, they get a lot of money from, from your customers. And you have a collector that gets information from, um, from, from the application itself. It will make pool slash metrics. So it may be a Prometheus 
uh, instances or it would be another exporter or it would be another collector like Telegraph, whatever. But with some cadence, like some interval, they will take the snapshot of the application in form of metrics and they will push it into a central repository. For logs, we may be Elasticsearch, we may be, we may be uh, um, like uh, CloudTrail or whatever. Uh, for time series, would be FluxDB, would be Prometheus, or would be like Honeycomb or New Relic, uh, whatever you have. For profiles, uh, we have a tool that is open source, it's called Profefe, uh, that does like that, just that. And also, you interact with those outcomes via API. And that's, that's very crucial, it's super important because it makes, uh, as you can see, developers don't need to uh, go and look for the application anymore. So there is not an arrow that goes from the smiley face to the application because there is an API and everything is centralized. So nobody cares about where, how the network looks like. Nobody cares about how to SSH anymore. Nobody cares about the QCTL anymore. Uh, they just go to the API and they take the profile via HTTP endpoint. And they are very good with that so they can write whatever automation they like to do it. So you can find like the, the code that I'm speaking about, the Profefe code in, uh, in a GitHub organization. It's called uh, github.com slash Profefe. And what, uh, the way I set up the infrastructure looks like this one. So there is um, all the application in the left that are running um, Go code and they are running as a pod in Kubernetes. There are, they, there are a lot of them running and they expose the HTTP prop uh, as I showed you before. And there is a cron job that is another pod that runs every once in a while, in my case, every 10 seconds, and it gets all the, it gets all the list of pods and it will, it, it will ping the, uh, the, the pod IP and it will grab the profile in form of uh, tar archive and it will push the tar archive into the Profefe collector and the Profefe collector will store it inside a DB. Um, we use, we are on, a, on AWS and we use S3, uh, but uh, Profefe has a, an abstraction layer so you can store them even in other um, like object store or locally or whatever you like. Um, we we probably do the uh, um, Google Cloud integration very soon because we, we are multi-cloud as well. So um, right now we use this infrastructure only in AWS. And as I said, uh, I, just to be clear, as a, like Influx data does a lot of open source and that's why um, uh, I'm contributing to um, Profefa, but this is not a tool that uh, comes from InfluxDB. Um, like, I got asked to implement the, a continuous profile integration and I started looking around uh, in the open source land and I thought this, uh, and I discovered this tiny project that I liked since day one and that's why I'm here. So that's it. And in, um, and the developer like interacts with the Profefe collector to get what they need because it's an API. Uh, there is another way that you can use um, that you can set up the infrastructure and as you can see there is no cron job here because actually the, you can embed a library that inside your application and the the, um, um, the application itself will take a profile from itself and it will push uh, the the outcome to the profile collector this um, you know you have to choose to choose the one that you like most um, I think the, you know, I, I will tell you why we used the other one. So we are using the, the one with the cron job, not this one. Uh, but this one is very flexible because you are inside your application. So you can take a profile at the best time you, uh, you think it has to be taken. Um, so I think at some point it will may uh, be good to use both. So you will take a profile every once in a while because you, you need one. Um, because and uh, maybe at some particular stage in your application, maybe during the, the shutdown, you will take profile because you will, because it's a good like information to have. Usually, when you crash, if it gets a panic, you just uh, recover from the panic, get the profile, and push the profile before it dies. So uh, you you will be sure to have one uh, that matters when matters. 
Uh, but yeah, but the flow is the same. So your application hacks, hacks has a collector and push to the Profefe API and you push it to the, in, into a storage. That's it. And your developers always use the Profefe collector to security gap because they have a nice API. So yeah, the pool based for the solution is the one that we are currently using because for our environment, it was uh, the easiest one to uh, start with. Uh, all our application, all our services are already uh, exposed, PPROF uh, internally. So for, for us, it was just a matter of like having a collector smart enough to uh, leverage the Kubernetes API. And uh, yeah, that's it. So Kubernetes, I have to say, made like this process very easy. When, when I uh, started to use uh, Profefe, the, like, the, the Kubernetes integration was, wasn't there. So uh, that's the, main, the biggest contribution I, uh, we made to the project. We brought a bridge uh, between Profefe and Kubernetes itself. So yeah, I see Kubernetes has a little task. So it, it makes a lot of noise, a lot of troubles, and it managed all those applications. And as you can see, the applications are not well organized because they just move and go as Kubernetes usually does. And yeah, but the Kubernetes has APIs and APIs can be used to discover like applications and you can get the IPs of the application. So if you have the IP and you know the port, you can get the profile and you don't need to, you know, do crazy stuff to get uh, to, to have them. You can just go and scrape them periodically. So yeah, that was an easy, like, like an easy summary to do, like just use the Kubernetes API and to create a bridge that will get to, uh, that will collect um, profiles and will push them to, um, to, to input DB. Like the, the profiles are uh, continuous gathered from all the application um, that we run. The, the way we communicate to, um, to the collector what has to be scraped is uh, via annotation. So if you use Kubernetes, you know annotation for sure. They have, they have a very uh, well known concept. So you can label and annotate almost everything in your, every resources in Kubernetes. And labels are very commonly used to do filtering. Annotation usually change the behavior of um, you know, what you can do with the resource. So that's why I'm using, um, a, that, that's why I'm using annotation for that. And uh, the annotations are very similar from the Prometheus uh, one. And uh, so you can see that all the pods that has the pprof.com slash enables equals true as an annotation, um, they are the target for the, for the collector, for the cron job. Profefe.com, by default, it looks for the port 6060. So the IP, we don't need the IP address because we get the list of pods that has the annotation and uh, enables equals true. We get the IP from the response and uh, by default, it looks for the port 6060 and uh, the root slash debug slash profefe, but slash pprof, because that's how it usually works. You can override um, those configuration using the pprof.com slash uh, profefe.com slash port equals 8085. So you can specify a different port, in this case, 8085, and you can specify a different path with profefe.com slash path. Uh, this service is like um, a first citizen in the in in uh, in Profefe, so you can group. Uh, you know, it's like the application name because obviously you have to know the application when you where you are taking the profile to. Otherwise, you will have you will lose context. Um, you can by default um, the pro the collector will use the pod name as a service. But my suggestion is to use the annotation because, as you know, the, the pod name changes every time like the, a new pod gets rescheduled from the replica set. Uh, so you will end up having a lot of noise and a lot of um, you know, service, that, service name that won't tell you a lot. You can, um, like the, the, the pod name will be placed as a label. 
because like every profile has the service, the instance and tags. All those information can be used to group and filter by when you uh, look up for profiles later. So service has to be there. Usually it's the name of the application that identifies the application and has a label, you will have other stuff like the, all the labels of your pod plus the pod name and things like that. So this is how you tell the collector how, how to scrape and what, and what to scrape. Um, so this is the, the actual like application we, the actual infrastructure we have. Uh, so there is the Kubernetes API in the left and in the middle there is our cron job that is called kprofefe and kprofefe runs every 10 minutes. It goes and asks for the and the, the Kubernetes API, the list of the list of pods um, that you that it it has to scrape. So it gets the list of pods and uh, it starts to collect profiles from each one of, of them um, directly, like just bringing them via uh, via, the, via the, the IP of the pod. When it gets the profiles, it push them to the profile collector. So the collector. Um, either the central repository will, will organize them, order them, and, and store them in the database, in our case, let's say, uh, S3. And from there, they are, they are available for developers to, to make query on them. So yeah, as I said, like developers now don't have to care about what they, um, where the, the network looks like or how to log in the QCTR or whatever, they have an API that they can call. And they will always know that they will have um, profiles available at the interval that they choose or that you choose for them based on the cron job uh, or on the schedule of the cron job. But this is super important because you are giving to them the possibility to do uh, what they are looking for without bothering you. That is it's a very uh, effective way to simplify it life for everybody. So yeah, I mean, I lied because I say that they don't have to care about the QCDL anymore, but that's not particularly true. I mean, they, uh, other than the cron job, the, the application that runs inside the cron job, uh, kubeprof also um, expose or provides a binary that is a QCTL plugin. So you can, if you want, install the QCTL um, profefe plugin, and it, it is the entry point for ProfFA from your kubectl. You can do stuff like kubectl ProfFA capture, and as you can see, it use the same flavor of the kubectl like traditional native, native uh, command. You have dash n to filter by namespace, and you can place one or more pod name, or you can also use the dash l to do label filtering. Um, so this is very important because uh, I like, I'm very, uh, when, I, when, I, when I develop, I, I really try to, to be as friendly as I can. So in Go, you can be that friendly because you have, a, we have a lot of libraries that, that we can get from, the, from, the, from Kubernetes itself. Um, there are a bunch of articles about that on my uh, blog, blog as well. So yeah, this is the way that you can capture profile. And uh, when you do that, your profiles get stored locally, but you can also, so it's a very good way, even if you don't use uh, ProfFA to have an, a way to get profiles. Um, because this what, what this command will do, it will make a API request uh, to Kubernetes and it will ask for the pod called input to db2 inside uh, the ops namespace and it will um, transparently for you do a cube, uh, what the kubectl does with the port forwarding. So it will open a port forwarding so uh, your kubectl locally will be able to reach uh, the, the container and it will download a profile. That, that's easy like that. Uh, you can, as I said, even uh, get it down locally or push it to 
uh, professor. So you will, you will, you will get that. You will get a URL that you can share uh, with your colleagues. So, and I told you about URL. So this is an example. Um, this is the same like command we we know like go to pprof, the same one we saw before. But we are not reaching our our application. We are asking. Uh, we are making a query to the pprof repository. And uh, as you can see, um, there is an endpoint that is called, the, the most useful one is the, is, is the one that I'm showing you here, and it's the API slash zero slash profiles slash merge. What the merge will do, it will give you back a profile, just like the one you get like normally from your application. Um, but it will be a merge in time from all the profiles that we that you collected for a particular service. That's why there is a service that equals out in the as a query param. You can you have to specify the type of the profile, so CPU, um, mutex, go routines. Otherwise, it won't be able to do an effective merge because merge can be done only for profiles that comes from the same type. And you have to specify a from and to as well, so it will know when to range from. And obviously, you can uh, use label selector to, um, you know, even filter deeply um, the the profiles you are looking for. So you will may, uh, if you are labeling the, your application with your pod with the um, go runtime that the application is compiled to, you can filter by uh, Go versions and you know make a comparison between how the same application works with two different runtimes, for example. And yeah, other than other than the merge one, you can also like do what what the REST API usually allow you to do. So you can um, you know list all the profiles by service, or you can list them by service and type, or you can. Uh, get only one, so you will have an IP, an ID, and you can just get the profile for one specific ID. So it's very flexible, and this is the reason why I, I got in love with the project because the you know the the API was already done and was working, so I just had to hook it up in my in my environment, and I I was sure that making all this stuff from zero uh, internally, usually you end up with a crafted like uh, pipeline that is not like as good as um, this one that is made from a community. So yeah, I mean, the, the number of pods can become like, can grow like easily because, um, you know, if you if you have 150 contain like containers running and you take a profile like every 10 minutes, you get a lot of profiles per hour. And uh, so have to be careful about where you uh, store them and uh, for how long you store them. So that's why we use S3 because it has TTL as well. So the, the resources, we, we keep them from a month. And uh, the good part is that we didn't, do, we don't do that yet, but we will, and we will do it at some point. Um, you can also, you know, we delete them after TTL, but what you can do, you can actually merge them and keep less of them uh, with less granularity. So you are kind of down sampling them. Um, so yeah. Another like consequences of, about having so many profiles is that you have really a lot of information, and uh, like those informations are crucial for devs, but also for ops because you have CPU, memory, and so on, and you can correlate them across uh, binaries. So you so all those profiles like contains uh, like information about the amount of CPU used by the functions. So you can ask, you, potentially you can ask across all the profiles, the, the top 10 CPU intensive functions. So if somebody comes, if your managers come to you and say, we spent too, too much money on Amazon or Google Cloud, we have to, uh, to be more conscious about what we, uh, how we deploy uh, in terms of, what we deploy in terms of performance. You can, you have a way to say, okay, those are the 10, uh, top intensive function across the board, so across all my microservices. And you can start from the most offending one and, and you know, save some money and cut some costs. 
So yeah, it's it's a very effective way to build bridges between dev and ops. Uh, as I said, ops deeply care about like CPU, memory, and those kind of stuff because uh, they have to keep the infrastructure healthy for everybody. So you usually end up like opening when when there's a CPU spike as as an ops spike, you start to look at the servers and you start to figure out what's going on. At some point, if you can fix that, you call a developer, but the developer, maybe the developer will, will join on board like two hours later because, you know, uh, that's how it, it usually works. And uh, maybe the outages will be already over. Uh, how do you fix that? So you get, in this case, you get a profile from two hours later because you have one and it can troubleshoot that. Uh, or you can actually um, analyze the profile itself and uh, simplify it like sample it and push it in a time series database and that's what we actually do um we we started to do it recently so we don't have a lot of like um graphs or like analysis that we did so what i'm sharing here for now is the is the infrastructure the what we do with the data it's still uh, something that we are figuring out uh but i mean this is the idea, as soon as the profiles lands to the collector to uh, ProfEFA, that is the, the logo on the left, uh, we store them to InfluxDB, to S3, as I say, and S3 uh, can be observed by Lambda functions. So we created a trigger that um, calls a Lambda function every time there is a new job on the S3 bucket. So what the Lambda function does, it downloads the profile it will sample it and it will push a sample to InfluxDB. What I mean with sample? The sample for us at the moment uh, is what you get when you do uh, top 10 in, the, in, a, in a PPROF profiles. So it, it, it's the, the top 10 of the, of, of the most uh, heavy UZ function for the profiles. Um, that you're looking at. So if you have a CPU profile or a memory profile, it's, uh, we sample the top 10 functions that are using most memory or CPU. So we have the, from that point in time, you, we have them as, um, we have them as a, as a, you know, queerable um, data from inside InfluxDB so we can build graphs or we can compare or we can do aggregation or, or we can answer the kind of questions I had in the previous slide. slide. So give me the, ten, the top 10 function across the board, so across all my binaries that are using the more memory. We can do that because we have the ability to sample and we have the data in a shape that is actually queryable. So I placed some I placed some link here um, the GitHub repository for uh, ProfFE. Um, pro, as I, as you saw along the line, there is a, a collector that is the centralized repository. It, like we call it collector, I think we should change name to repository. But so that's why maybe uh, I confuse the terms a little bit. Uh, and there is also a ProfFE slash uh, cube dash ProfFE that is the bridge between. Kubernetes and Professor. So that repository, the second repository contains the cron job and the, and the kubectl plugin. But there are also a bunch of, uh, like the second one is a research about Google from, because they also have um, a continuous um, profiling infrastructure and you can use it in Google Cloud um, in Stack Driver. And uh, so there is a, it's a very good paper to understand why and how it's useful. Um, if it's not clear from this presentation and, uh, or if you want to go deeper, the third link is a very nice post about how to do profiling in Go. So if you, if for you those concepts are new, the PPROF concept is, uh, are new, just have a look at that link, it's super useful and, and, uh, and well done. Um, the third library, the third, the, the first link is a, is a repository that comes from Google and it is actually the one that I'm using to do um, the, the sampling from PPROF to InfluxDB. So it's a library that allows you to um, read a profile, disassemble it, and do whatever you want with it. 
And yeah, the third, the last one is my blog. So thank you. That that's the end of my presentation. Um, I didn't have the opportunity to see the questions. So um, let me see. Well, let me say thank you for the great presentation, Gianluca. Um, again, there is time for questions now. So if you haven't already put them into the Q&A box, feel free to ask them now. The Q&A tab is just on the bottom of the screen. So as far as you've already found it. Um, maybe let's start with the first one from David, um, who's asking if Cube Control port forward, um, doesn't it always work to connect to a port in order to receive a profile? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I decided to implement um, the, the QCTL capture for in that way, because it usually runs from your uh, local laptop and cube for um, port forwarding from my understanding and from my experience is the, is the way that usually works. So it's, a, it's the most common that, uh, that to find open and, and workable. If uh, for internally from the, like the, the cron job doesn't use port forwarding because it would be too heavy and, and useless because you can configure your network, uh, your Kubernetes network to, to allow, you know, um, the a pod running inside to reach the others. Um, so it, the, um, now this is how it, it is implemented uh, now. I presume that um, as more people will uh, onboard the project, as more like we will have to implement different ways based on uh, other common as access points. Awesome. So let's continue with Abel Karim. Abdel Karim, sorry. Um, does the profiling affect the performance in a production environment? Uh, you, I mean. I don't have uh, you know a strong uh, um, you know answer for that, but uh, like the community, you will you will find almost like uh, all the applications like exposing it um, internally, and uh, it it sh it doesn't affect the the, the runtime in a way that uh, you know it's like there are stuff that will slow it more sooner, let's say. Oh, yeah, cool. So Alejandro is asking if this applies to other programming languages as well, or if it's just Golang. That's a very nice question. And uh, I saw that Google has a repository that is called uh, pprof.js. <laughs> so uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's supporting other languages. I think there is also a C uh, pprof. Um, like exposition, but I only have experience with, uh, uh, with, with Go. Awesome. Kid is asking if there is a way to dynamically disable and enable profile metrics for push. Yeah, it really depends how you, the, which infrastructure you, um, you choose to, to adopt. Uh, if you are in, if you if you will go with the same one we use, um, the pprof is usually always enabled. And uh, if you don't want to uh, collect profiles anymore, you will stop the cron job, uh, and it will stop collecting metrics. The cron job I didn't show it, uh, but it also it is very dynamic. So it's do not imagine like that you have only one cron job. Uh, that will scrape all the all the profiles. Um, we have one because it's enough for us. Uh, but it supports uh, label selection and uh, namespace uh, selection uh, filtering, like the the uh, QCTL uh, profile uh, capture command. So you can actually run uh, as many cron job you want. You can also you you can you know, and they can collect. Uh, they, they can target a subset of uh, pods, so you can all you can also do stuff like okay, this cron job will look like for will profile the front end namespace, and it will run every ten minutes because maybe you you need that cadence. 
um, and you have another cron another cron job that will look for all the other namespace uh, that will run every like day because you don't need that granularity for all the rest. Uh, so it's very very uh, dyna uh, like dynamic and scalable in this in this way, and it's also very easy to implement because you just uh, you just have to deploy more part, more more uh, cron jobs. And uh, if you are going with the other implementation, so if you will um, instrument your application with the uh, pprof agent library, you are in the application. So you have code, so you can uh, enable and disable it as you, as you wish. Cool, uh, Marianne, please put it into the Q&A box that uh, we can tick it off. Um, also, please do think about other questions as we have some minutes left. But until then, um, someone anonymous asked, what is the performance overhead of profiling in production? Yeah, I'm not aware of like, uh, as I said, like, um, like numbers around that. So from my experience, we keep it running uh, all the time uh, in all our applications and we don't see degradation in, uh, in any way or, or stuff that we can point to the, the profiling. And from my, from my experience, it is a, a well, um, I mean, it's not something that we do alone. Awesome. So there is Barry's question in the Q&A button as well. Thank you for that. Is there any tool support enabling to correlate profiles with results from distributed tracing? Um, well, the problem is that they have a very different group grouping techniques because usually Tra distributed tracing, if I understand it in a good way, like open tracing, open telemetry, and stuff like that, Jaeger, uh, they are grouped by request. Um, with profiles, you you are measuring the runtime, um, so you can do tracing inside the runtime, but I like it and exposing them with the pprof as well. But I'm not. I don't have experience, so I don't know. I don't know the answer. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, oh, just in time, another one. What are the benefits over other CNCF graduated tracing projects? Um, yeah, I mean this. Uh, this is not a tracing project at all. So it's uh, as I say, like profiles are. They give you information about how your runtime is is uh, is performing overall. So usually, like if you are speaking about like distributed tracing, like as I said, Jaeger, uh, Zipkin, open tracing, uh, they usually are by request. Um, this is for the runtime of the, like your, how your binary runtime is working. Okay, Over, maybe overall uh, request. to pronounce something of the question again, it's, it's the last one. Um, what are the benefits over other projects in general? Like are there other profiling projects maybe even what's the benefit oh um, I mean uh, yeah I mean the, it's usually I mean other projects you have to for open tracing you or open telemetry you actually have to instrument your application and you have to start and stop spans uh, they gives you a different picture of the whole how your application is uh, is, per is performing uh, profiles are, are very like lightweight in terms of uh, how it costs to enable them. It's just a line, <laughs> uh, as, I, as I showed. And uh, with this infrastructure, you can connect them very easily. Um, so I think you can have both. We have both. We have traces and profiles and metrics and logs. We have <laughs> because, as I said, like the, the uh, very effective way to do to understand how an application or a system, entire system works, uh, is to have uh, snapshots of it. And as more information you can get, in, you can have in that snapshots, um, has most you can understand from the application. And our snapshots are made from logs, events like Prometheus events, um, traces like open tracing, open telemetry, and people profiles. So those are the languages that our application uh, speaks and we collect them and analyze them to figure out what's going on in production. Very good. Any last questions?
Awesome, great. Thank you so much, John Luca, for the great presentation. All right, that's all the questions uh, we have for today. Thank you for joining us. The webinar recording and slides will be online later today, so keep an eye for that. We are looking forward to seeing you at a future CNCF webinar. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.